All right, so if we have uh, the scan plan already on and the scanner also connected to the scan plan, as we saw in the previous um, section of the video, or on your phone or on your computer, what you need to do, or on your tablet, you can search for available networks. So if the scan plan is on, it should show you the network name. So I'm clicking that, I'll hit connect, I'll put in the same IP or same password. So 0123456789. Hit next. Yes. Now my computer or your phone or your tablet can be associating to the actual network over here. And that means it's still searching for the internet. This is obviously not connected to the internet. So it should say connected, but no internet once this is done. But you don't have to wait for this to finish. Um, now pull up your preferred browser. I don't care which browser you use, but any browser, once you type in the IP address that we saw on the actual scanner, mine's already set to it. But if it's that 192.168.100.121, you press it on your phone, your tablet, or laptop, you should be viewing this screen. So this is the same screen that appears on the scanner itself you're not connecting to the scan plan you're connecting to the scanner directly with the ip address that we kind of read on the scanner side so this doesn't require any software to be running this doesn't require any any licensed uh, equipment or anything this is really just a browser so this will work on a phone or a tablet or a laptop um, next what you want to do is you want to configure your swift uh, mode so if you go into manage and you go into the swift details and now this is a new feature in the uh, latest release of the firmware on the uh, ferro scanner so if you don't have a uh, scanner version 6804708 i guess and or newer uh, these functions will not be available for you but that's the re prerequisite you have to have the latest firmware on the scanner and have the swift enable function on so if you go into the swift details over here you can select your vertical resolution over here and then here you select your horizontal resolution essentially so i'll leave it in the middle 1 8 resolution so 125,000 points per second essentially and i'll do a 10 second anchor scan and you can go as low as five seconds and as high as 15 seconds uh, it just collects more or less data and it really depends on the environment that you're actually trying to scan it so uh, this is set and one clue to making this work really well is you do have to uh, create a project of some kind. So I'll duplicate a project here that I had already, New Swift, but I'll create a new one just for the sake of the video, call it New Swift. Uh, we'll call it New Swift 2, for example. And what we're doing essentially here, I'll call this New Swift 2 is uh, we are telling the program or the firmware over here on the scanner um, what the settings for the stationary scans should be and the stationary scans are the ones that are still the good old-fashioned two to three to four minute scans that record the sensor data meaning it will record the, the inclinometer the, the altimeter the compass and if you have the gps the gps location also uh, so uh, any of those stationary scans will be named this. Your moving and your swift uh, sessions will also be called new swift to scan and they will be either mobile or stationary scans over here. So this is the nomenclature. This is okay now. We are in the right mode. I'll select my stationary scan uh, parameters because I'm inside. I'll just leave the settings be. It'll take four minutes and eight seconds to finish the stationary scan. I'm happy with what I'm about to scan and the resolutions that I selected here and the resolutions that I se selected for the actual Swift uh, anchor scans, which are over here. And now I'm kind of ready to actually start scanning. So again, this can be done on a computer or a laptop or on your phone. So when you hit the start button over here, this is where the scanner will uh, complete its first full uh, 360 rotation. And it'll let you uh, know if it's safe to start moving the little cart that the scanner is set up on with a scan plan uh, attached to where it is. 
you see that it'll start uh, beeping, recording. There's an SD card in the scanner. Um, you'll notice that the outline of the room or the environment that you're scanning in will be shown in this little preview. It says anchor scan in progress. While it says that, it, you're not allowed to actually move the scanner. But now that it says you're free to move the scanner, this is where you can actually get up and uh, start uh, moving the scanner and seeing uh, what it does. So once you're in your first position where you want to do an anchor scan, you know, on your phone, tablet, or your laptop that's connected, just hit the button that says anchor. And you'll see that you cannot be moving at that point. It tells you do not move. It'll take the 10 second scan. And once it's finished, it'll once again prompt you to move to a new location. And I'll proceed to move the cart to a new location again. And for context, I'm really going very uh, few feet. This is a small room, but this will work as well in a larger room as in a small room. Um, the 10 second scans can be done really quickly, obviously. Only take 10 seconds and then your motion in between shouldn't be hundreds of feet, should be shorter distances, which then facilitates the registration to be uh, much more accurate. So I'll carry on with a couple more scans here. All right, we're pretty much finished with the amount of data that I wanted to capture. Then the last scan that I'll do is, you can do more of them, but at least one of them has to be the stationary scan. So I'll hit the stationary button. The scanner will uh, then switch out of the mobile uh, mode and actually do a full-blown 360-degree view uh, stationary scan, which will not take 15 seconds or 10 seconds in our case, but it will take the pre uh, calculated four minutes or what we saw over there. So this will be a full-blown scan which will record the sensor data, meaning that inclinometer, the compass and the uh, altimeter, and if we're outside the GPS. And uh, this will be then utilized afterwards in the software to uh, properly rotate and uh, link the adjacent scans to this one so that the whole project is not tilted on its side or uh, rotated in the wrong direction. All right, so once the stationary scan is finished, you really don't have to do anything. The scanner will continue in its mobile uh, uh, data collection uh, routine. It'll start spinning the laser again or the scanner again. Um, I am not going to carry on with this. This is just a, a, a video to show how this is done in the real world. So I'll hit the finalize button. Otherwise you could just carry on with hitting the anchor scan as you move the scanner around. Stationary, if you're doing the stationary scan, I'm just hitting finalize here. So finalizing will spin down the uh, mirror, the scanner will go back to its home position. The data transfer from the scan plan to scanner obviously makes it onto the SD card. There is no data that is recorded on the uh, scan plan itself, so everything gets embedded into the SD card from the scanner. So next what we will do, once this is finished, we will get a preview of how many scans we actually took. They will be broken up into pieces of uh, mobile, stationary, and mobile scans. And that's what I'm talking about. So we have the naming, the way we started it in the project. There was a mobile part, and there was a stationary scan, and then there was a mobile part at the end of the stationary scan. So we're done. I'll hit home. And I'll actually pull down and shut down the actual scanner. So this way the scanner is turning off. We should lose its connection, of course, over here. And once it's off, we can pull the SD card out and proceed with the processing.